from the Zip Cave in Huntington, West Virginia. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. Welcome to the Geek Zip Podcast. I'm all out of bubblegum. Comic books, superheroes, Marvel, DC, sci-fi, TV, music, wrestling, and so much more. That's no moon. Submit your questions and or comments to geekzippodcast at gmail.com. Where are you? Here. Go! Now. We rescue a world from mysticism and tyranny. And usher in a future brighter than anything we can imagine. Here's Ryan Zip and Chris Chin. Ah. Oh. Uh, let me get a drink too, yeah. The I'm human torch some. was denied a bank loan. I'm drinking something that's horrible, dude. What are you drinking? Apparently there's a white Red Bull that's like coconut flavor. God damn. I mix that with iced tea. <laughs> Why would you do such a thing? Because <laughs> a long time ago there was this drink that I really liked that was like a mix of black tea and coconut water. And I thought, maybe. <laughs> It bright tastes like a, a sugar cube. Oh, dude, it's like sour sugar. It's like a big uh, sour patch kid. Big sour patch kid. I got to keep my arms off the table because I shake. It's the Geek Zip Podcast. Ryan Zip coming at you from the Zip Cave in good old Huntington, West Virginia. Christian is coming at us remotely from Lewis Manor. Christian, what's up? Hey, yeah, what's up, guys? You were telling me about this uh, this Red Bull concoction that you created. Why don't you yeah. explain? I, well, I usually like home. I usually like to mix my Red Bull with Gatorade. I might have mentioned that before, <laughs> but anyway, I found this coconut flavored Red Bull in the fridge. Yeah, and there was this old bottled drink that we used to get at like uh, Lollapalooza or the Governor's Ball or one of those music fests, and it was. Uh, Black tea plus coconut water. Mm. So mm-hmm. I was like, I'm going to mix some black tea with this coconut flavored Red Bull. And yeah. it's not, not very good. It's no, not safe. I wouldn't think it would be. Um, I need to stick to my Gatorade and Red Bull. Probably should. That's probably the best idea, I would think. Uh, I got a, a great treat. Of course, if you, if you listen to the show consistently, you probably know that we record on Saturdays. So... Um, Came from the uh, girls' soccer game, BZ's soccer game, which they didn't win. She's got to kick the shit out of that ball, man. You That's the problem. Bit, you know, you got it, a little bit of treble tin in your... Huh? You sound a little din. There's a tin in your talking. You got a tin in my talking? Out of my speaker when you're talking. Well, that must be your speaker because everything sounds fine on my end and it's not about making any levels. Okay, fine. So that's your problem. You should get headphones All like right. I told you. I have some. I have a pair of headphones. Well, you should have them on. You should be professional. Now you're holding yeah, up the show. My, it's uncomfortable on my ears. <laughs> I don't like wearing them either. Well, good. You're. You're. I guess you're more dedicated than I am. What professional. Can I say? The word is professional. Uh, I, I guess that's it's the word. I'll go put them on just so you can't say I'm better than Christian. He won't I don't even give a shit if you right. can put them on or not. As long as you can hear me, can you hear me? Well, I just want to make sure it sounded okay. Okay, I understand. I, I didn't want people at home to be like, gosh, it's just buzzing in my Definitely ear. Definitely not getting that on the recording. So that is on your end, my friend. Maybe you got me All turned right. up too loud. It could be. I tried yeah. turning you down some. Does that help? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> but I got uh, the other here. Anyway, so I, as I was saying, we, we record on Saturdays usually, and I, we were leaving... Brooklyn soccer game and uh, Zayden Zips birthday is oh, yeah. uh, is uh, it's already passed. It was last weekend, so happy birthday to Zayden. Uh, you might know him from the happy Zayden birthday. report. Yeah, happy birthday, buddy! Got him some wrestling action oh, figures. He, he wanted 10? some wrestlers. Uh, he's a year younger than Sam, so that would make him twelve. Oh man, time's so flying. Yeah, it's flying. But yeah, I got him. Uh, there, I, I want to plug this lady's um shop it's on route 60 it's near and again if you're not from the local area you're not going to know what the fuck i'm talking about but it's on route What's 60 he talking about? yeah it's got the pink elephant you know route no 60. it's past that shit it's actually down near where lady g's used to be uh, lady godiva's um there's a little trailer and this lovely old lady is set up there it's called the treasure box 
and it has some of the coolest shit in it for to reasonable prices. Records. They got Master of the Universe. They got Mighty Morphin. They got GI Joe. They've got Star Trek, Star Wars, wrestling figures. You name it. This this lady has it. It's like a small flea market, but it's just her. And um, I was able to get some action figures for Zayden because he he's really into he's he's into wrestling right now. Yeah. We talked about this before. And he liked I, the Roman Reigns. He had the Roman Reigns mask. He had the Roman Reigns mask, right. And I said, well, wh- which wrestlers do you want this year? And he was like, well, I want Undertaker. God damn, that's, that's a hard one to find, man, Undertaker. Especially in all his glory. Um, you know, jacket and hat and what have you. Uh, but I could not find him. Could not find these at Target, Walmart. Could not find any of the wrestlers he asked for. Of course, he asked for some pretty iconic wrestlers. He asked for the you Undertaker. Check the, check the internet. I mean, I don't have time. His birthday, his birthday, as as we record, it's tomorrow. Uh, it was Sunday last, if you're listening to this now. Um, but uh, I didn't have time, so I had to go Slipping. find him somewhere. Yeah. Slipping. Eh, I thought it was May. I thought it was May 30th. There's so many fucking birthdays around <laughs> April and May. I mean, it's just really crazy. I mean, even among us, among our group, it's it's there's a bunch of April, May birthdays. My birthday's in April. Aaron's birthday's in May. Uh, Zach's birthday's in May. So it's just my dad's uh, birthday's in May. Boom. So it's just yeah. There's just there was just a lot of confusion um, regarding you know um, trying to get these action figures for Zadie because you know I got him the ring. I think we talked. So about what made that. you what made you check out this place? Well, I'd seen it on Facebook Marketplace. She'd put some stuff on there, and every time you click on it and you read the description, it would say "Come to the treasure chest at whatever whatever Route 60. And finally, I mapped it one day. And uh, found out how to get there and went in. And, man, I walked out of there with uh, some awesome shit and probably spent less than 20 bucks. I mean, she really makes you a deal. She, it's her shit. And she's got a lot of it, apparently. She told me she's getting a lot more of it, and it's coming soon. So, um, you know, but it's just a great place to check out. It's, it's right there by Hometown Sports. Remember that Hometown Sports place? Remember that? Like a I don't know. It's been like, a while. Been a while since I went up. It's that it's far. it's out that ways. Yeah. If you if you get off the uh, Merritt's Creek exit and turn toward the mall on Route 60, you'll see it on your left, about half a mile down the road. But it's a really great place. Christian, what have you been watching this week? Anything uh, new? <coughs> sweet Tooth. <coughs> what Sweet Tooth? What is that? <coughs> Season two just came out on Netflix on Thursday. I don't even know what I that got, is. What is that? I got one episode left. I think it's based off a comic property. Really? But it's it's like they uh, found some virus or some kind of genetic thing, mm-hmm. and they engineered these half human, half animal hybrids, and at the same time created a virus that killed like ninety percent of humanity or something like that yeah wow that sounds and now it's like 10 years later and they're the original hybrid is out there and they're still fighting the virus and it's just it's 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 good nice nice well made well made yeah i went back and watched the born movies uh oh yeah they have the uh, collection on netflix uh i just watched the latest scream how was that it had some born style action, dude. That uh, ghost face guy just stabs people like he's a trained assassin. Oh, really? He's, he's, so we got born ghost face. So, I mean, basically, the ghost face identity. Is, uh, he's the best knife fighter I've ever seen, dude. You've seen a lot of knife fighters, have you? Him and Machete. You he's know? good. He's good with blades. <laughs> what was that movie? Like he's really good with a knife. Oh, that was The Godfather. Like he's he's uh, very good with the blade. It makes me think of uh, um, Blades of Glory one, Young Guns too, with the all the specialties. Dib- Diamond Phillips, Lou Diamond Phillips, Lou Dan. Lou- <laughs> Did you see that in the group oh. text where Aaron wrote Ludan instead of Loudon? <laughs> no. And then they started calling him Ludan. No. But I can imagine. Oh, God. Ludan. We'll have to, uh, that's going to have to be our new insult for everybody. Shut up, Ludan. <laughs> Makes me think of Lopan. <laughs> Lopan. <laughs> Shit. Oh man! All right. Uh, okay. What am I talking about? All right. What are born movies? Uh, still playing Red Dead Redemption. I had I had a cart full of N sixty four games 
at dkoldies.com. Um, I think the total came out to just about a hundred bucks, and I haven't pulled the trigger on that yet. Um, about how many games does that buy you? Like five or six, maybe. Oh, okay. Yeah. Games vary in price. I think the most expensive one I have. I mean, the games I wanted were cheap. Yeah. Um, I mean, the more expensive games, like fucking Donkey Kong 64, that shit's like 80 bucks. That's yeah. like for a game nowadays. Yeah. Um, well, so, I mean, they, they never lower the price on that one. <laughs> no shit. That stayed the same price all these years. Uh, Mario's a little more expensive, but I mean, you know, I have to have Mario. I mean, if you're going to have a 64 and you don't have the Mario game, I don't think it's the, it's worth it. Um, I th- what do I have in the cart? Star Fo- I had Star Fox in the cart. I had the Superman game they based off the animated series. I've um, heard that one's uh, terrible. It's I know. To that's why I wanted terrible. to get it. It's like, it was like seven bucks. I wanted to get it so bad and play it. Um, just you to see how bad it is. You got to fly through these rings, dude. Yeah, I've, I, dude, I've heard. <laughs> Don't worry. I've heard all the news about it. Don't worry. It's just like the comic book, dude, when he flies through all those rings. <laughs> that's not what happened. It was in oh, Superman shit. Volume Three, Issue Five. Oh, Volume Ring Three, Master. Issue Five, Ringmaster. God, you're just making shit up. Oh Check Lord, it. Google it. I, uh, I I did also almost pull the trigger on um, Star Wars, the new one, Jedi. Yeah, yeah. Survivor or whatever, and it I haven't came done out to yet. some mixed reviews on the PC. The see, PC that's why I didn't really. Trouble. Yeah, I didn't really pull the trigger because it had some mixed reviews on Xbox too. Actually, um, about the gameplay and the story, um, people are not liking the story from what I'm reading online. But um, I read the IGN review a little bit, and it was yeah. talking about how uh, I know nothing about it. Per- Nothing. Well, I was saying it, it like it, it, it. If you played the first one, it like doesn't start with you like losing all your abilities or anything. Well, that's fucking. That's one. a relief because yeah. that's what the first one is. Once you complete the story, you can keep going and like upgrading your shit. I hate when games do that. It sucks. Yeah, I hate it when the Batman a- games did that. It's like God, I already got all these <laughs> fucking gadgets, and it's the same fucking story. So anyway, but yeah, yeah I get, it's such a, totally a trope. Cliche or something. It's like, oh, I forgot how to do all this stuff. Yeah, I, I forgot oh, how somebody to do, stole my power. Yeah, I forgot how to grapple up a fucking building. I'm Batman. I don't know what's wrong with me. Um, all right. Don't forget support the show any way you can. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Don't forget we do have a Patreon account with exclusive content, including videos, interviews from the past, and a whole lot more. Find those at patreon.com forward slash geekzip podcast. You can also donate via PayPal. Still looking for that show sponsor. Email me if you're interested, geekzippodcast at gmail. Dot com And don't forget, we are going to be live at Bluegrass WrestleCon 4 coming up this Saturday. And we look very forward to that, right, Christian? Is that like noon to 5, right? Noon to 5, it's going to be. Um, and we're going to be in the house hanging out. And then the show is that evening at 6, I believe. Gives people an hour to kind of get ready. And uh, don't forget, you can get information at the Bluegrass WrestleCon 4 Facebook page. Uh, or by searching Time Warp uh, Retro Console Shop, I think, on Facebook is what it's under. Um, but we're going to be there handing out some stuff. Christian has some goodies. I've got a gift bag. We may do a raffle. i uh, got some magnets for you. And, and you know, we just really want to get out there and meet the people. So we hope to see you there. Say what's up and say you want to wrestle. I don't do that if, unless you're going to wrestle Christian. I can't even imagine uh, you in a wrestling match. I just figured you would just like go limp. Like I figured you well, just... you no, nah, dude. Now I try to put my weight into it. <laughs> you did used to missile drop kick me. That was your bread and butter. Was the missile drop kick off the trampoline? That was what you always went for, and it would it just it's unstoppable. I don't know how people stop it. I just spear you, dude. No, you tried to spear me, and I just move, and you go past me. It was well, you got to sell it. You got to sell it. You're not supposed to dodge it. <laughs> I'm not getting speared by you. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck anybody that wants to spear me. Well, I mean, it's give and take, dude. And you I've got enough gastrointestinal man. problems without having to worry about getting fucking speared in the gut. I'll tell you that much right now. All right. Let's get into the show. First of all, take care of our RIPs this week. Had a couple of big ones first. Mr. Hillary Bear. Jesus Christ. 
Mr. Was that? Harry Belafonte. Sorry. Uh, age 96, he was an actor, a musician, and a social activist. You know him as the guy who sings the song from Beetlejuice. Damn. I wish they had a different picture of him. It looks I hate like this he's picture. singing it right there. Dude. I know. Yeah, I hate this picture. If it, <laughs> The picture does not do him justice. Um, but that oh, song he that, he did, that he did way before <laughs> Beetlejuice, mind you, uh, really made him immortal at that point. Banana Boat. That's the Beetlejuice one, the Deo. Uh, is that the name of the song? I think no. Deo, the banana boat is Deo. Is it? <clears throat> I don't think so. Yeah, see, look, Deo, banana boat song. Where? Oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. But that was his third album. Third <clears throat> album. You know, and Harry Belafonte broke several barriers. Um, he appeared. He's an activist. He yeah. was an activist. He appeared on television. Um, with a white woman. God, what? Who was it? Um, Cher. They were singing together. No, goddamn. Oh, God. it could have been Cher. It wasn't Cher. <laughs> <laughs> Might have been Carol King. Maybe I don't know. I I don't know. Uh, anyway, but he was just one of the you know last iconic personalities passed away at the age of ninety six. Um, tireless activist for noble causes. Congestive heart failure was the reason. So all our best to um, Harry's fans and family. I'm very sad to lose him. This one kind of came out of nowhere. Legacy. Yes, he does. And I'll probably hear it again here soon if what I'm reading is correct. This one kind of came out of nowhere and hit me. Uh, Jerry Springer. Uh, kids our age, of course, will know that, Christian. Kids. Adults our age will know that. Um. They go, Jerry, Jerry. This is a man who was former mayor of Chicago, of Cincinnati, excuse me, who uh, moved to Chicago and started up a talk show that became controversial, to say the least. Um, he It was about people, dude. <laughs> yeah, something like that. He uh, died at the age of 79 of uh, pancreatic cancer, so terrible uh, for Jerry, but man, his show, God, I remember when it was on top and it was everything everybody talked about. Um, God damn, he had movie deals, 27 seasons. He hosted that show and he was mayor of Cincinnati, 77 to 78. And I'm pretty sure he had to resign from office <laughs> for some reason. Um, <clears throat> So again, this was uh, and, and this was the guy who went head to head with Oprah. You know, this was a time when no one seemingly could beat Oprah in the ratings, and here comes this uh, dude from Cincinnati, Ohio, that had to resign his mayoral ship out of controversy to create this all new uh, reality. Uh, you know, which tabloid, of course, tabloid TV. You yeah. find out later. Of course, it's all a work, um, but. You know, at the time, you didn't know that. I didn't know that anyway. Of course, I was younger. But, um, you know, I thought that shit was f for real. I was like, holy shit. These crazy fucks exist. Which they do, but maybe not to that degree. Now the show's just on YouTube and the, the people just film themselves. Very true. So all our best to Jerry's um, family, his fans. I know he has several. Um, change the landscape of television forever. For better or worse. <laughs> All right, let's get into the news. We had a big one in the wrestling world last week, Christian. Um, turns out CM Punk made an appearance at WWE Raw for the first time since 2014. Uh, uh, yeah, I heard he met with Triple H. Met it's... with Triple H, and I guess he. there is a lot of debate over what his official reason was for being at the taping, but um, sources indicate that he made amends with The Miz. Um, yeah, it's, according to the article, he had given Miz uh, crap about going to Saudi Arabia. Right, right. And he was just, which, you know, I, I don't know. <laughs> the real reason he was there is unknown. We also know that apparently once Vince found out about it, he ran him out of the building. So oh. I guess there's still some bad blood between them. Um, but this is just in the middle of, of all these questions regarding CM Punk's future in wrestling. Um, to see him turn up at a WWE show is obviously going to turn some heads. Uh, I I really can't see him coming back to WWE, really. I mean, 
after what he said about that company, what he said about the owners and the board members, um, what he said about the business in general. Uh, You never know. You never know. That's true. You know, money talks. No doubt about it. Um, That'd be like Ultimate Warrior and come back and die. Well, maybe. Could be. We don't know. Like that way to the very last minute. I'm continuing to hear that Punk is still a member of the AEW roster and that he is still coming back. Um, That's what I know officially. Uh, Yeah, yeah. But again... We're not really sure what he and Triple H talked about. They've had beef in the past. He could have been burying the hatchet, maybe trying to pave some, you know, sidewalk in front of him for a future if AEW doesn't work out. Because I got to tell you, it's not looking too good right now um, that his AEW plans are going to work out the way he wants them to. So uh, we'll just have to wait and see how this story develops. But as of right now, all that happened was he turned up at Raw. And he talked to The Miz, he talked to Triple H, I think he talked to a couple other people, um, and supposedly it was to make amends for things he's either said about them or toward them in the past. Um, why? We don't know. We'll have to wait and see and find out. Do you think he got bought a ticket? Probably, probably not. I, th- I think I read in the story, not in that story I had pulled up, but another story that he had walked in the back with some of the guys, um, and they let him in, so... Pretty sure I read that. Huh. Did you watch the trailer for Twisted Metal, Christian? Yes, I did. Yeah. Did you know that um, the clown Sweet Tooth is Samoa Joe? No. Yeah. Apparently, it's Samoa Joe. Um, Anthony Mackie's in it. I'm not real sure what he's doing. Um, it's supposed Looks to be like a- he's the main character. Yeah, he's the main character, but I really don't know how you make a plot line out of this. Uh, this game. Well, um, you win Twisted Metal. Well, yeah, but uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm sure there'll be trailers coming soon. If not, as this episode drops, there may be a trailer between when we're recording and when it drops. But uh, the Peacock Original Series is set to drop July 27th this summer. Uh, Twisted Metal, for those of you that don't know, was a video game in which you were able to get these crazy cars. Think of like... Um, Oh, what's that movie? Cannonball Run, where all the cars have guns on them and shit. And uh, that might not even be Cannonball Run. I'm not sure. Death Race, maybe? Death Race. That's a good, uh, great example, Christian. Good job. I know. I knew I had you on here for a reason. Um, it's supposed to be a comedy, I guess. Uh, but basically in the game, you got in these cars and you just try to kill each other. There was no... Was there ever a plot or a point? There was well, never I mean, like a goal... Person- each person had a story. They had to win the competition, and then Calypso would grant him a wish, and it usually That's would be right. like a, a monkey right. paw kind of wish. Yeah, it'd come back to bite him. Anyway, you can check out the trailer on our Facebook page. Anthony Mackey is in the show, and yeah, I'm pretty sure. Where did I see that? I saw somewhere where it said that Samoa Joe at Sweet Tooth, which well, cracks trailer- me up because uh, that isn't Samoa Joe like five four. <laughs> The trailer shows a little bit of Sweet Tooth in his van, his ice yeah, cream truck. Yeah, you do get a shot of Sweet Tooth. Um, there's also a uh, there's an image on the um, on the story page. I'm going to find out about the Samoa Joe thing, though. I'm going to find out. And, and you see there. Anthony Mackie driving his car with machine guns on it. Machine guns going off. All, all shit's broke loose. All hell's broke loose. Christian, you always hate to see this in the comic world, but it does happen. IDW... If you don't know who they are, they're publishers of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles comic books, the Sonic the Hedgehog series, and the Star Wars or Star Wars Star Trek franchise series. Um, they went underwent massive layoffs and removed itself from the New York Stock Exchange, pretty much meaning that it cannot be publicly traded, um, which is not a good sign for a company at all. Uh, it's unfortunate because uh, IDW is one of those companies that you know not only does comic books they do other stuff and i think that's what really has has hurt the company is the just all out you know lower readership that you're getting nowadays with people people don't want to read shit they you know they read online they watch it they scroll it so uh pretty sad um you know i don't think they're completely off the table yet and i don't know how it's going to work with um those titles it's a cute dog um 
but we'll uh, keep you apprised on the situation. And you know, I, I'd like to, I'd, I'd like to hope they can pull out of it. But uh, you know, IDW is uh, well, they'll definitely be remembered for some iconic stories and characters and comics. So um, you know, sorry. Yeah, for there was, was there was a lot of business news in there. Yeah. About lot, why they were news. delisting and stuff like that. Right. And, right. and again, that's the because it's not like Marvel or DC. It's not just a comic book publication company. It's actually more like, um, I don't know, iHeart, where it's like in everything. Vince Vaughn is set to star in a new sequel to Dodgeball. Okay. That's welcome news. Yeah, I'm it. happy with that. Uh, back in November, Justin Long dropped the news that Vince wanted to make the sequel to the 2004 sports comedy on ESPN 8 De Ocho. That's what I always remember about Dodgeball. Gosh, Ball. Almost, almost 20 years, dude. That's crazy. That's what I remembered. ESPN 8 De Ocho. Yeah. Because the that was how it was pirate. going. You the can one dodge a pirate. wrench, you can dodge a ball. <laughs> what was that guy's name? I can't remember. He had a funny name. I can't remember. Um, hilarious movie. Vince Vaughn had, had huge star power with, uh, Ben Stiller and what's her name? His Christine wife. Taylor. Yeah, whatever. Um, and it was really great. Uh, you know, just a fun, funny movie. You know, yeah. it, it, I was going to say it was a lot of fun. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah. Sports, sports, sports comedy. You don't get a lot of those very often. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm like you said, Christian, welcome news for me. I, as long as, as long as they get Ben Stiller back, that's, that's the only thing. Patches O'Halloran. That's what his name, Patches. That's what his name was. That was the coach. Uh, yeah, that was the coach. Um, a, a lot of the cast are involved apparently as well. So, uh, we'll see what happens, uh, with the dodgeball sequel, but, uh, that would be, we could always use a good chuckle Christian, you know, yeah. in our world. A new trailer for Transformers Rise of the Beast dropped, probably be out of emergency, uh, because everybody was freaking out about how bad it looks, um, or at least everybody at Paramount. We get our first look at Unicron, live action for the first time. Did you see it, Christian? Yeah. It was really crazy, and uh, made me kind of excited for this movie, I gotta admit. Um, some really crazy battle scenes in the trailer, too. They actually... Showed some stuff. So, um, a lot of beasts. A lot of beasts are in there. Yeah, for sure. And, and Omicron, which I think a lot of people kind of thought they might keep as a big surprise, you know, big part of the trailer. That's a major selling point, dude. Nobody's seen that before. Oh, dude, that's, that's what I said. Never been seen live action before. We've seen all the Transformers except for the T Rex Megatron, which I'm still haven't seen and I'm still nervous about. Purple. He's got to be purple. Um, you know, I, I, I really hope that something can, t I mean, how the, how do you fuck up Transformers film franchise is the first question with the way technology is nowadays writing. That's how you fuck it up. That's what's happened is the writing has been terrible in these movies. I gave them a chance. I tried. You can't sit through them. You don't know what's going on. It's fucking impossible. I'm telling you those Mark Wahlberg ones. Oh my God. I don't know what's going on in them at all with the fucking Dinobots. I was so excited about the Dinobots. And, and I barely remember them because I'm trying to fucking remember the rest of the movie. It's just like background movie. Yeah, it's just like, I'm just like, you know, it's, it's such a simple idea. Why are you making it so fucking complicated? I don't like that. Anyway. They should have just stuck with Shia LaBeouf. I don't know why they didn't. I didn't mind that storyline. It was a hell of a lot better than that fucking Mark Wahlberg shit they did. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Um, uh, John Cena. <laughs> was he in one of them? Wasn't he in Bumblebee? Uh, I don't know. Fuck. I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> anyway, um, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm nervous about this one. I really am. Um, when does it come out? Does it not say? Oh, June 9th is when the movie will hit theaters, and I'm sure that either Christian or myself will uh, will go check it out and we'll let you know. Um, When's Flash come out? I don't, I don't know off the top of my head. Is that uh, June 30th or closer to the end of June? I think it's closer to the end of June, yeah. Yeah, because they, they want to get that July 4th weekend, I believe. So, 
That makes sense. Great news and something that I was kind of surprised that didn't already <laughs> happen. Like, long uh, overdue. Yeah, seriously. Carrie Fisher, who everyone knows as the lovely Princess Leia from the Star Wars franchise, is going to officially receive her Hollywood star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. This is going to happen on May 4th. Star Wars Day, may the 4th be with you. Which I think is awesome. Um, You know, uh, again, how the fuck did she not have a star on there already (laughs) when she was alive? I mean, that's that's the shitty part, is now she can't enjoy it. I mean, it's good for (laughs) a family or whatever, but blah, blah, blah. But I mean, still, you know, that's, that's kind of a shitty thing. You know, now, now they need to give Chewbacca a star, dude. Like I'm Chewbacca just the character or Peter, what's his name? Well, I was going to say, you know, <laughs> it'd be like finding out Harrison Ford doesn't have a star. Oh my God. <laughs> no, it wouldn't. <laughs> At all. No, I mean, Carrie Fisher was great, but Harrison Ford, she was <laughs> Yeah. Um, anyway, that's great news for the Fisher family and her legacy as an incredible iconic character in that franchise. Um, I'm sure there'll be photos and stuff. We'll make sure we get them to the Facebook so you can check them out. Well, this is kind of depressing news. Unfortunately, we sometimes have the duty of reporting news that is not always happy. Uh, Richard Lewis, who is an iconic stand-up comedian and uh, film actor. Star of Curb Your Enthusiasm. Saw him in Curb Your Enthusiasm last, I think. Um, He was Larry David's friend slash nemesis. He's funny on it. Oh, my God. He's funny in everything. Um, he was recently announced his retirement from stand up due to Parkinson's. Uh, this is terrible. Parkinson's is a horrible disease, as everybody knows. Um, Lewis was able to participate in the 12th and perhaps final season of Curb Your Enthusiasm. Um, it, I, and like Christian said, if you have not seen him in that show, he's hilarious in it. Um, you know, again, just a, another great actor. With you know, who I have a lot of respect for, it's not hard to be a stand up comedian through that many fucking decades. I mean, the guy's been on stage since I think the mid 70s, so um, since before we were born, yeah. So, I mean, our hats off to Richard, all our thoughts and blessings, and all that stuff. And and hopefully, maybe, maybe we'll find a fucking cure for some of this shit at last. Shouldn't we have, shouldn't we have cured some of this shit by now? I mean, who do we got to call? Ghostbusters? Well, I don't think they'll help. Uh, say Alien the name, Day, dude. Say the name. Fede Alvarez? Fede Alvarez. I, I don't know. I say that name. I, that's good enough for me. The director of the new Alien TV series that Amazon has picked up shot a photo on Alien Day, April 26th. Christian, do you know why that's Alien Day? Because that's when all the... Poor Mexicans cross the border into the country, and they all try to get in, and they say, it's Alien Day. We allowed to come here. <coughs> oh, my God. You're going to kill me. Do you not know? <laughs> no, I really don't know. Is that when the, the Roswell thing happened? That's the name of the planet that what? they go to. They go to LV-426 is the name of the planet. That the aliens live on. LV426. Oh, oh, okay. So 426. Alien. Right? 426. 426. 426, yeah. Huh. There you go. Um, that's, that is why yeah, that's it. Alien Day. So <laughs> That's like Mario Day, March 10th. <clears throat> why is that? Remember March 10th? It looks like Mario. Oh, yeah. Okay. No. Okay, but whatever. <laughs> anyway, the image that uh, the director shared was a face hugger holding a clipboard from Hollywood. You know those, what do you call them, markers um, that says Happy Alien Day. So You can buy them at Universal Studios. Can you? Yeah, like uh, souvenirs. Oh, I think you're lying. Fede is the guy that did Evil Dead, the remake. We are um, greatly awaiting the Alien series. I think it's going to be really good. Um, I'm a huge fan of the fran- of the franchise. Um, so all my hopes are that it's good. This actually leads us into our next story. Sigourney Weaver was asked about the Alien franchise and perhaps coming back to it. And she pretty much said no. 
<laughs> she's done. She, she retired. She's done with it. Well, I mean, you know, again, this goes back to, a, to you know, these are actors that are hired for roles. These are not nerds and geeks like us that feel an obligation to stay with that role because they started it, you know? Uh, I don't know, dude. They're going to de-age her like they did in the Avatar, too. <laughs> They de-aged the shit out of her, actually, way, way much more than I thought. Um, but I thought this story was interesting because the last time that she thought about getting back into it was back when Neil Blomkamp was doing his thing, Christian. You remember we were actually covering that. The um, District 9 guy. Yeah, the guy who did District 9 was supposed to do a direct sequel to Aliens and had gotten a lot of the characters from that film, including Sigourney Weaver, Michael Bean, and more. Yeah. On board, I think Lance Hendrickson had also uh, jumped on, um, and then it just didn't it didn't materialize because they decided not to go that direction. They went the Alien Covenant, Prometheus direction with Ridley, but then Weaver does go on to praise Ridley because he did create a character that was so long lasting. And I always find this fascinating. Ripley was intended to be a man when the script was first written, it was intended to be a male role. And at the last minute, Ridley Scott threw Sigourney in there and she just carried that franchise for decades. So it may not have been as iconic with a man in the role. I don't think it would have been. I think that's kind of what kicked off that whole thing in the eighties with the, with the female hero kind of thing. Um, female hero. Again, Sigourney Weaver has nothing to prove to anyone. She's done very well in the franchise. And as much as I would love to see Ripley back on screen, I watch alien all the time and I love seeing the old ones too. So that's fine. Star Trek fans were f happy last week after the uh, showrunner for Picard, Alex Kurtzman, said that he hears them for their demand for Star Trek Legacy, which could include Star Trek fan favorite Jerry Ryan's ca uh, character. Seven of Nine. Seven of Nine, yes, yeah, sorry. I was swallowing. Um <laughs> Uh, but again, this has just caused a, a, a great big kind of um, uproar with fans because of the success of Picard. There are a thousand different stories you could tell in the Star Trek universe. Um, well, this, show, this mentions that there's already some Star Trek shows going on, right? Uh, it's stuff I've never heard of, though. Well, there's that there's that strange worlds. Yeah, that one. I never heard of that one. That's like just basically a Star Trek show without any reference to anything from the past. Um, you know, the 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 whole Star Trek legacy thing was a direct result of Picard, and yeah. now they're saying, what if you did a legacy film, but kind of went with and followed all the captains of these uh, Star Trek spinoff shows, and Alex Kurtzman says that's a good idea. He, he hears it, <laughs> and he thinks he's going to do it. So, power to him. Steven Spielberg has seen Indiana Jones 5, and guess what, Christian? He loved it. What? He loved it. You are foggy. I saw that. I'll <laughs> fix it. You are fogging it up. Um, he told the director that uh, he thought only he knew how to make one of these movies, referring to, of course, his time as Indiana Jones director for the first three films, four films. And referring, referring to James Mangold, right? That's right. The director of the upcoming Swamp Thing and director of The Wolverine. I think he did Ford versus Ferrari, too. Um, I mean, you know, Spielberg, I don't know about, because he's in this business long enough that he knows whatever he says is going to influence ticket sales when he comes out of that movie. So, I mean, you know, he's obviously not going to come out and go, man, that sucked ass. I don't think you should go see it. I want <laughs> Go watch Raiders. <laughs> it's too old. He was too old. But uh, we will have to see Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny hits theaters when? Let's see. Uh, mm -hmm. June 30th. And that'll be a fun time to be alive. I guess the first 25 minutes is him de-aged. Lots of big movies coming so, out in June. Yeah, lot, lot. this summer's a big, big movie year. I guess... Trying to make up for lost time from the COVID. We're back. Movies are back, baby, after Top Gun. <laughs> Don't even start with me. I'm not. I just is. 
Amazon Prime has acquired Batman's upcoming animated projects, including Batman yes. Cape Crusader, Merry Little Batman, and Bat Family. You'll be able to see we them We talked on about Amazon. some of these shows before on HBO Max. We did. They were on Max. They were uh, dropped. Cut and by Zaslaw. And some of these were made by J.J. Abrams and Matt Reeves. Right. And right. Bruce Tim. Yeah, Bruce Tim. I'm not really the, familiar with who he is, but I'm he sure he created you like Batman him. the Animated Series. So. There you go. He knows what he's talking about. Um, no, I, I totally agree. A- animated, uh, you know, superhero shows are becoming very hard to find. About the closest thing you're going to find to it is maybe like a Power Rangers incarnation, whatever the hell they're morphing into these days. Um, you know, like and a- maybe some stuff like like Marvel every every three or four years we'll come out with a bunch of Avengers shows or like an Iron Man show or I think we're going to get a what if what if season two whatever that's what I'm talking about that's kind of their their formula whatever what if whatever well no I just yeah exactly I'm just kidding no I agree you're right what about Merry Little Batman dude have yourself a Merry Little Batman well yeah you gotta gotta get that Christmas audience you know that animation looks kind of questionable well, I love the animation board? from Cape Crusader. That looks yeah. like kind of like an, an original Batman, almost like a noir type look. Um, yeah, that one looks okay. I don't which have one did you say looked one. bad? The one underneath it. The one with Damian Wayne and oh, Alfred that one? and Bruce Wayne right there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it looks more Ren and Stimpy to me. That's yeah. Merry Little Batman, dude. Looks Merry like, Little yeah. Batman right Merry there. Merry Little Batman, yeah. I'm a little merry little Batman. <laughs> it's an animated comedy, action comedy that, uh, you know. Maybe it's going for the Teen Titans Go. Well, it said it was like animated by the regular show guy. Yeah. Yeah, I heard, that's what I said. It's got that look. That weird, the uh, weird thing yeah. that the kids like these days. Yeah, I know. The like oblong look Stimpy, I guess. faces. Yeah, that's, what, that's the closest thing I could compare it to from our childhood was Ren and Stimpy. Those things look crazy. Even the normal people looked weird. Um, no word I used to on be able to these... draw a good Stimpy. Really, you should try it. You should sell. It. I used to know how to do it, do with circles and everything. <laughs> All right, we don't have a, uh, a a timeline on when we will see these animated features, but as soon as we do, we will make sure and we let you know. Hercule Poirot is back, Mister Mustache. Yes, the great Mustache Kenneth Branagh is returning. For another round as the infamous Hercule Poirot, the uh, detective that you've seen from the screen adaptations Murder on the Orient Express and Death on the Nile. This time, it's a haunting in Venice. This one sounds actually interesting, but I don't see how they keep making these movies. Don't they just keep failing? I don't know. That's that's what I thought. I, I thought Death on the Nile fell on its face. Of course, it did. It was released in the pandemic. I mean, right in the middle of the fucking pandemic. Like, I think it was the summer of 2020 <laughs> that Death on the Nile came out. So, um, who knows what it would have been like without the pandemic. So, I don't want to say that. But, um, I have no idea. What's this? Do you know what this movie's about? I have no idea. Like I know he's at a Halloween stuff. party. Yeah. And somebody kills somebody or something? I don't know. They're at a seance and, you know. Okay. Shit starts happening. Is it real or not? I love Kenneth Branagh. I think he is an incredible filmmaker. Um, Have you seen either of these other two? I, I, I started watching Murder on the Orient Express, and I remember I liked it. I had I had to leave for something. Um, but I remember loving it. It was a, it was a what great about movie. What about, like, Knives Out? Did you see that one? No. Did he do that one I wonder, too? I wonder if no, no, that one's. But that's kind that of uh, Ryan same Johnson. Deal. Okay, uh, but I was it? wondering if it was similar, like detective stories. Um, but, you know, I don't know. It definitely centered around Perot, the the murder on the Orient Express. That was like the center of the attention. That was the main character was Hercule. So, um, but, Hercule. Uh, yeah, we'll have to wait and see if this new one's any good. Um, Let's see, when does it come out? September 15th. It will hit theaters, A Haunting in Venice. Final Destination, just when you think it's dead, it comes back to life. Uh, There's a Final Destination 6 in the works at Warner Brothers with John Watts, whoever the hell that is, set to write and produce the horror sequel. 
Uh, I guess John Watts did Spider Man No Way Home. Uh, he's a producer. Johnny Watts. Yeah, J O N Watts. By the way, uh, this is cool. I like Final Destination. I mean, it's well, going to but this one stuff. says it's going to uh, divert from the regular formula. So does that? Yeah, make but you it nervous? also says staying faithful to the entire premise. Uh, well, how's explain to me how that's possible? Well, I watch I this guy know. with the bow staff. Oh, it sounds like they're talking out of both sides of their mouth. That's what it sounds like to me. I do. I, I saying, will say, you know, yeah, you can't ahead. drive. You can't drive no. past a a thing with logs on totally it. Totally agree. Saying, this this destination has some iconic imagery, dude. If, if you play it right, that anxiety that you feel. Preach, preach, bro. Preach it. I they love need, it. That's what that's what they need to focus on. The everyday stuff that the roller might coaster. Just make you anxious what was it? We had the plane. We had the logs. We had the roller coaster. I remember the tanning bed. I remember there was one where they died in a tanning bed. Yeah. Um, God damn, what were some of the other ones? A big glass plant. Plant. That's what killed. Plane. What's his name? The big glass fell on him. Yeah. One guy died in the shower or something. Did one guy get like his head cut off by a train or something? Oh, there was that one where the guy was like uh, slamming the jackhammer into the car. And the girl's like, can you put that in quiet mode? And he was like, yeah, I'll put it in quiet mode. And then it set the airbag off, which slammed her <laughs> head back onto that spike. God, that was so funny to me. And But I... Think about how traumatic that must have been for that guy. He's like, ha, ha, uh, oh my god, oh god, I killed her. I killed somebody. Oh, I always geez. think about the guy who drove the truck full of logs. You know, I always think, of, <laughs> oh, yeah. like, did he ever look behind him? <laughs> did he just he keep just going? Left, dude, left the scene. He just kept going. <laughs> I'm out of here. He probably just pulled over and walked away, dude. Just walked miles. Walked into the woods. He just yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oh, shit. Um, well, we'll keep you updated with what happens with Final Destination. Christian's right. I mean, it does have some value as a horror franchise. I, I mean, forgot it had old Sean William Scott in the first one. Sean though. William Scott. That's right. He's the guy who gets his head cut off by the truck by the uh, train, I believe. Mm. All right. Let's see what else we got here that's worth mentioning because we're running out of time here. Uh, Michael Keaton made a visit to the... Original Batcave for the first time in 30 years, and apparently he got a little teary-eyed, Christian. You would, too. I would, too. You're right. It's it's uh, it's incredible. Um, he probably felt the same way when he was putting that suit on. You know, I can definitely tell you that never probably in his wildest dreams, June 16th is when it comes out. Um, ah, in the middle of June. He... Um, you know, Michael Keaton, ha I think he's he's gained a new respect for this character that he didn't have before. Um, After seeing so many people oh play and get it right and, well, and their and, strength and weaknesses. Well, not only that, but with the fucking toys and, the, and they made a comic around his specific Batman. Um, you know, and he's just always commented on as the best Batman and this and that. That's got to be fucking flattering to hear that shit, um, you know, and and to to be able to insert yourself into a role like that thirty years later uh, is just something that you can't even can't even put into words, and, and I'm sure I'll tear up. Well, the um, article mentions how he had him take a picture and said it's for his grandson. Yeah, yeah, it was, it's, it's, and it probably is very emotional. Because that's probably a part of his life he thought he'd never see again or, you know, would never be a part of again. And here he is at the forefront of this movie. I'll bet people would go see it if there was no motherfucking Flash. If it was just I him. Bet I bet people would go pay money to see this Batcave. <laughs> probably. I, I would. I'd pay some money. I'd pay the price <laughs> of a fucking movie ticket for sure. Um, anyway. Batcave tour on the Universal lot, dude. The. What a dream, except it's not a universal movie. Uh, I know, I'm just, yeah, I'm just, you know what I mean. <laughs> the Flash hits theaters June 16th, and you bet your ass I'll be there on day one to check it out. All right, that is the news for the week. Christian, you got anything else news-related that you wanted to cover? Uh, No, no, uh, AJ Styles wrestling. 
Yeah, he uh, appeared with the OC on SmackDown. Um, OC is just going everywhere now. <laughs> just following AJ around. Weren't they just in like fucking Impact? I don't know. I don't know either. I don't think so. Well, AJ again, not at least AJ's. Well, been AJ's been out, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, right. And so this could be like a situation where they're like his um, his backup. But I thought I didn't know they were still signed with the WWE. I thought they were they'd moved on. But I guess I'm wrong. And then we got wrestling this weekend, right? <sighs> the wrestling con. Yep. Yep, we got the Bluegrass WrestleCon 4 coming at us this weekend. Christian and I will be there live doing some live interviews and, uh, you know, having some fun. So stop by and see us there. It's at the Boyd County Community Center. Just off the Catlettsburg exit, you turn left, you run right into it. Noon to 5 is the time. Make Did sure you still have that story about Ernest the Cat Miller? Yep. I got it. We're going to get to it. Um, into our oh, events. My, bad. Christian my bad. My bad. I just want to make sure we didn't forget it. <laughs> no, we didn't forget it. I uh, wanted to encourage this because I think it's really great they're bringing it back. The Appalachian Film Festival is returning to the Huntington area. It's presented by Foundry Theater and will take place in the Gene Carlo Stevenson Auditorium. That is in City Hall, Christian. Yeah. August so 18th through the 19th. Submit it. <laughs> That's right. Submit your film. You win this film fest. Categories are student, music video, short, and feature. And we have shared the application and the QR code to get started to our Facebook page. Your final deadline is June 16th. So you need to get on it and get that film submitted. We do have some unfortunate news regarding the Bluegrass WrestleCon 4. Jerry the King Lawler, unfortunately, has had to cancel. As most of you know, he is still recovering from his stroke, and he is just not where he needs to be to participate. So we want Jerry to get better. And uh, in place of that, we're going to have a special guest. Christian mentioned it. Ernest the Cat Miller going to be in the house. At and Bluegrass lots of Wrestling other, Con. lots of other great, lots of other great talent wrestling. and things to do will be there. There's plenty of stuff to do, you know. And, and all our best to to the king. We know that he would be there if he could, um, but you know, we definitely don't want him jeopardizing. What do you his think about old Ernest the Cat Miller? Do you remember watching him? Barely, barely. I remember him, dude. I don't know where he came from. I was like, who is this guy? He is on everything, and he's so annoying <laughs> he's very obnoxious he reminds me a lot of mvp i'll be honest with you like i see a lot of mvp in him um but anyway so he will be there and uh should also i think he'll be at the show as well um so we will be very excited to see the cat in action the rough and rowdy saw, brawl what i was gonna say i saw some more like ads for the matches at that thing and one of them was making me laugh because it had the champion labeled yeah. But I thought that was the their name. I was like, why is that person's name Champion? That's a good name. <laughs> champion. My name's Champion. Champion versus Challenger. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Take it back to 1910. Oh, man. I love that Challenger guy, dude. Uh, Rough and Rowdy Brawl is returning to the Mountain Health Arena here in Huntington. It says Rough and Rowdy Brawl 21. Which it's it's kind of weird. The rough and rowdy brawl was always kind of like a um, tough man kind of event, but this looks more like a wrestling show. Uh, I just don't from know. their I don't know. flyer, I've never heard of the rough and rowdy brawl. But they box. It's it's just like the 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 tough man. It's just a different name. Yeah, but I thought that was like locals who fought, not like it is local. These are all local people. That's what, what I'm telling you. Yeah, they made a poster, and it looks like. But I mean, it looks like there's like managers and shit. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know what's going on. Uh, they're calling it the Great American Redneck Bash. <laughs> Happening May 12th, 8 p.m. at Mountain Health Arena. 20 fights, two title belt brawls, ring girls, and more. Tickets start at just $24. You can get them at the arena box office or, or, or online. And, of course, our friends from 92-7-98-5, The Planet, your chance to win all through the week, so make sure you tune them in. All right. That one girl that one girl's in a bikini and boxing gloves, dude. Is she gonna fight in a in a bikini? That I don't Is know. Is that the thinking? I don't I don't wanna think that. Well, I don't know. It's hard to say. You got anything else, Christian? Uh we'll see you guys Saturday. Come on down to the Bluegrass Wrestling Con in Catlettsburg, 
Kentucky. <laughs> That's right, Kentucky. Very good. No, we do look forward to seeing you there this Saturday, noon to 5. We will be there. Um, going to try and make the wrestling show as well. We are old fucks, so, you know, we do tend to bail. <laughs> So don't be mad at us if we get tired and go home. But we'll definitely be there for a long time, and uh, we hope to see you there. Don't forget, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Share the show. Tell your friends. Tell your folks. Tell everybody you know to follow us and support the show if you can by becoming a Patreon member and getting access to exclusive content, or you can just give us a plain old donation through PayPal. Christian, you got anything else? (laughs) Bye-bye. That'll do it for us. For Christian, this is Ryan Zip. Have a great week, everyone. Thank you for listening to the Geek Zip podcast. Listen on iTunes, Spotify, Podomatic, Facebook, Amazon Prime. Follow the Geek Zip podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Search Geek Zip podcast.